Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, I, too, like my colleague from Fair Oaks, is not going to raise my mic on every single bill on the budget, but I would like to take this opportunity to talk uh, to the budget as a whole. Um, it's amazing to me that California can go from an eight, $108 billion surplus to a $31 billion deficit in one year. Now, as I mentioned in the previous budget uh, committees that we had, um, that you cannot have a budget at all unless you have a private business and private individuals pay a tax first. None of us in this room would be able to cash the checks that we get to be a legislator if it wasn't for private property and private taxes to be, to be paid first. Um, and this budget, what we're simply doing is balancing it by cost shifting. We're shifting uh, money, as the, the senator from uh, Berkeley talked about, in bonds. Uh, we are taking GGRF funds and we're shifting them around to help uh, balance this budget. Um, there, are, there are no, not one single thing except for three or four items that I will mention in this budget that helps a business stay in California. The original taxpayers. Um, just this morning on my way into the office, uh, I heard on KFPK that one third of San Francisco's uh, properties are vacant. Uh, maybe that's why there's uh, no folks riding uh, the transit to San Francisco because there's people leaving there and there's no jobs. Or it may just be the fact that they don't feel safe on the transit system. Those who do, uh, as business, uh, were getting a windfall are those people who are highly connected to uh, the governor or the likes, and those people are uh, in Hollywood. They're getting a tax break to make sure that we, they are allowed to uh, keep uh, producing uh, films and, and entertainment here in California. If you're a uh, clean energy provider, you're getting tax breaks. No other business in California uh, that I'm aware of is getting any tax breaks uh, here in California. And I want to talk, you know, yesterday the senator from Los Angeles talked a lot about uh, disadvantaged um, and equality in our uh, committee hearing. And I'd like to just give you some statistics about why Californians um, have a hard time, uh, and especially if you're low income or disadvantaged, living in California. Here's some statistics. Residential electric rates are 73% higher than the uh, national average. Gasoline is 36% higher than the national average. Cost to build a home. 40% higher than the national average. Mortgages per month, 51% higher than the national average. Rent per month, 47% higher than the national average. Homeowners and renters insurance, 23% higher than the national average. Real estate taxes, 46% higher than the national average. Car insurance per year, 35% higher than the national average. This one will really blow your mind. Home prices, 91% higher than the national average. Rate of homelessness per 10,000 people, 144% higher than the national average. Members, I submit to you that the reason that we have equality income is not simply just minimum wage, which I think there is uh, a wage differences that we need to balance. But it's all those reasons I just stated. We are in most cases almost 50% higher cost of living in California than there are in other states. If you want to help a disadvantaged person in California, you simply cannot just raise their pay. You must lower their cost of living. This budget doesn't do anything to lower the cost of living. It quite frankly takes taxpayers' money and tries to subsidize those people who are uh, low income and e equality disadvantaged. For example, our clean energy goals like offshore wind are going to cost 30 cents per kilowatt more. Now, 
We've, we have the first year of a downturn budget, and we're seeing the cost shifts. But members, as my friend from Santa Clarita mentioned in a, in a hearing a few weeks ago, that he was going to leave California after he is done in this legislature. Well, I want to submit to you that I came to this legislative body to help protect the future generations in California. Not just my own, who's been here for 92 years providing food and fiber for Californians and Americans, but for my sons and daughters to be able to stay in California. If we do not address the cost of living in California because of our policies, we will never balance out California. And so I'm not leaving. I want to just go on record to say that this is the first year. In the next seven years, between now and 2030, we have extremely high goals to not be able to have a combustible engine car sold in California, to meet our goals for climate. But at the same time, members, we must balance out the ability for Californians to afford to live in California if we want a future in California. So those are my comments across the board. There are things in this budget that I'm absolutely going to vote for as we go through these budget bills. But I just want to let you know that if we don't address these issues, members, in the next seven years, uh, I don't want to say I told you so I won't be here. Um, maybe somebody from my family will be here to be able to articulate uh, those concerns I have with this budget. But for the future of California, we must address the high cost of living. For those reasons, I won't be supporting all of this budget, but pieces of it I will, and I will uh, refrain from speaking on every single bill to give you a break today. I appreciate your uh, uh, attention, and thank you.